Hi guys, recently I got a question about how to do screen replacement in DaVinci Resolve using the Fusion tab. So today we're going to be having a quick look. Uh, first off, I would like to thank the free stock footage from pixel.com. I think it's P-E-X-E-L.com. They have many other stock footage if you want to check them out. And um, also, uh, there are actually quite a lot of variation of how you can do this. But uh, after thinking about which one to use for this tutorial, I've settled on this method, which I feel is probably the easiest for a beginner to wrap their head around uh, what is actually going on, what tool is doing what. So that's that's the method I'm, I'll be using for today. Uh, it's obviously not the best method for every single situation, but I think for today, I'll give you a good idea of how to how to do this sort of thing. So uh, yeah, let's begin. So right now we're in the edit tab of DaVinci Resolve and let's say this clip right here is the one we want to replace the green screen with maybe a video that we have or a picture that we have. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the Fusion tab to come in and start applying our effects and do our work. Uh, so as you can see right now, all we have is just the input. So it's our original footage and it's just going straight to the output. So nothing's happening. So uh, regardless of the variation and the method that we'll be using, the one tool that we'll probably be using to do this sort of work is the uh, planar tracker. So I'm just going to click on the window down here, press shift space to bring up the uh, search tool. And then I'm just going to search for the planar tracker. And there it is. So I'm just click on it and press add. And obviously I'm just going to double click to remove this line here. And I'm going to drag a line from the input to the planar tracker and from the planar tracker, to the output. The planar tracker, as the name suggests, would track a plane or essentially a flat surface. So obviously if you think about it, the screen screen here is just a flat surface on the iPhone. So if we track its movement, let's say the phone tilts upward, downwards, to the left, to the right, we can track those movement and then we can match it to the video or the picture that we'll be using to replace this green screen, right? So if the green screen twists to the left, the picture will follow along and twist to the left as well. So it'll look, look as if it's stuck on this flat surface right here. So essentially, if you want to do other things, like uh, if you have a wall on your footage and you want to put a fake graffiti or a picture or maybe your logo on a wall, you can also use the planar tracker to track the movement of the wall in your footage, which is essentially just a flat surface. And then after you track those movements, you can match it to the, the graffiti or the graphic or the logo that you want to place on the wall. So it looks like the graffiti is stuck on the wall as, as it's moving around, so it will look more realistic. If you use just a normal tracker, let's say you just track this point right here, all it does is it will just track the movement like let's say up and down to the left to the right or maybe rotation and zoom. But it wouldn't, the perspective wouldn't be right if the phone or this flat surface kind of twists to the left to the right. The, uh, the text or whatever you place on this flat surface wouldn't follow along as realistically. So that's why in this case we're going to be using the, the planar tracker. To start the track, I'm first going to click on the planar tracker node right here and I'm going to draw an area on the surface that we want the program to use to track that, that surface. So right now I'm just going to click on the pen tool and I'm just going to draw around these five markers right here. So essentially we're telling the program, okay, have a look around in this area for markers and area of the surface to, tr to track basically. Now the two things we should watch out for is when we're drawing this area, we shouldn't like draw outside of the surface. So let's say if I draw it, so it includes this background right here as well. The program might get confused. So the, the tracking marker might be moved to the left, but the, the spots or the points in the background might be moving in a diff different direction. So the program might get confused like, hang on a minute, is this surface moving to the left or to the right? And it can, you know, it can make for a bad track. The second thing we should watch out for is anything that will kind of come in front of this surface. So let's say in this scene, if the, the person's finger is kind of moving around, moving around in this bottom left area and covering up this tracking point. So in that case, I might want to draw an area so it might only include like these four tracking points to the top right and just not including this area where the person's finger is going to be moving around because again it can confuse the program like hang on a minute the finger is moving to the left but the uh, the tracking point is moving to the right so which one should i use to track uh, the movement of this surface so it can again lead to a bad track but in this case obviously the finger is just staying outside of this area here and i'm just drawing an area on the surface with a clear tracking details so the program should be able to track the surface quite nicely uh, if you just draw an area just around like just a plain green screen, then that would make for a bad, bad track as well because there's actually no tracking point or detail that the program can use to track the movement of the surface. So in this case, we have like nice contrast here, some details on these five spots. So it can use those to uh, track the movement of the, 
the, the phone basically or the surface of the, the screen of the phone. Now once we've drawn the area we can change the tracker to a hybrid point area which seems to work best and then we can just move to the frame where we want the, uh, the tracker to start tracking. But another thing to remember is when we move it to the frame that we want to start tracking, we should not forget to set the reference time. So we set it. So we'll say, okay, we want to start tracking from frame 75 or whatever. But in this case, I want to start the track right from the beginning. So I'm going to move the play here to the beginning and I'm going to click set reference time. Now, obviously this time our beginning frame is at zero as well. So th there shouldn't be any problem, but sometime at the beginning of your clip, it might not start at let's say frame zero. So Regardless, even if you're starting at the beginning, you should always set this reference time just in case. And well, since I drew the uh, the area in the uh, a different frame, now the phone kind of moved a bit, so I have to move the tracking area. So let's say I want to track it around here. Okay, that should do. And once everything's set, we just click this button here for the program to start tracking. And now. It will just take a while because this clip is quite long, maybe about, I guess, about five seconds. So I'm going to speed this up, speed this up, and then we'll come back when the tracking is finished. Okay, so our track is finished. Uh, I guess I was wrong. The clip is actually about ten seconds long, but we're just going to check the quality of our track a bit. Just move the playhead around, and as, as you can see, the points are sticking pretty well. So it's probably a pretty good track. Now, once we finish tracking, we can bring in our footage to replace the green screen. So you can just drag a footage in from a folder in Windows or in, in your Mac. Uh, I'm just going to drag a footage in, just left click and drag a footage into the Fusion window and just let go. And this is the footage that we'll be using today to replace the screen screen. So if I click on the number one on the keyboard, not the numpad, just the keyboard, it will bring this footage up in the, this first monitor here. So if we play it, you can see it. this is our footage. Now my footage is actually, actually shorter than 10 seconds, so I'm just going to click on it and go to the Inspector tab and click on Loop. So this footage will actually just play, just keep playing in a loop, so it, it, it would last the whole 10 seconds. And now that we have our footage, I'm just going to right click on this little square here and drag it into the Planar Tracker. And when I let go, it will have an option of where I want to place it into the Planar Tracker. And I'm going to place it in as a corner pin one. So just left click and now it's just going in to the green node. Once I've done that, I'm going to go and click on the player tracker node and for the operation mode, instead of track, I'm going to change it to corner pin. And now we can see the footage that we're using to replace the screen screen right here. And we just basically have to move the, the four corners of our footage to match the four corners of the screen right here. So I'm just going to drag it around this a little bit. So this is the top right corner. And this is the bottom right, and this is the bottom left. I'm just going to do it quickly, just initially, uh, around here. And now if we play the footage, you can see that our footage is basically tracked to the, the green screen, or the four corner of the green screen. So it's just going to match the movement of the phone perfectly now. So as you can see before, that's why I decided to use this method today because obviously it's probably the easiest for a beginner to kind of wrap their mind around of what the tools are doing and the steps of doing it. So as you can see, it's pretty easy. Obviously, there's things that we're going to be fixing in just a bit. But so basically, all we've done in theory is we just track the original footage. So if I click on this media in and press one, we just track the surface here and then use the uh, another footage or picture to follow the track of the surface. So just move around using the corner pin to pin our four corner of our picture of our footage to this green screen here. And that's basically all we've done. Now a different approach might be to put our footage actually on the bottom of the original image. So right now if you think about it, we just brought out in our footage and we place it on top of the original footage and we just track it so that it stays on top of this uh, green screen area here. But a different method might be we could key out this green screen area to create like a transparent window and put our footage on the bottom so we can see through this green screen area onto our footage. Now each method will have its advantages and disadvantages. So let's say if you want to go for a different approach where we key out the green screen, I'll just do it quickly as an example. We might use like one of the keyer. Let's say I might use a delta keyer. So I'm clicking on the media in, press shift space and just search for a delta keyer, press enter. So now we've placed a delta keyer after the media in. And if we look at it, so right now we haven't keyed anything out. We're just going to click on the delta keyer, go to the background color, 
And we're going to pick screen color and pick the screen color here and then go to OK. And now basically it's keyed out some of the green. Now let's say if we go to the planar tracker, right now what we have is for the merge mode, we have the foreground over background. So basically this media in or the footage that we're using to replace the green screen is basically the foreground. And the, the original footage is basically the, the background. So right now we have a footage on top of the background. So if you go to your player tracker, see it's foreground over background. So if you want to flip it the other way around, so we have the original image on top and this uh, footage below it, below the original footage so we can see through, we'll just change it to background over foreground. Bam, like that. So basically right now we have the original image on top and we can see through to the background, which is the media into, which is the footage we're using to replace. So we can see through this area we've keyed out, this transparent area, onto the footage below. But obviously, as you can see with this method, we also have to remove these uh, marker points because they're not green, and that will involve some extra steps, and uh, it might be a bit, start to get a bit complicated and kind of a bit confusing for, let's say, like a beginner. On top of that, as you can see, the uh, footage that we, the free footage that we got, the, qu the quality is not that high. So when we use the delta keyer, or even if you use the different types of keyer, it will start to affect the uh, kind of the, the background and the, the other areas as well. So if we compare it, let's say I, I put the original footage up on the first monitor, and this, uh, this planar tracker on the second monitor, or the delta keyer on the second monitor, you can see that after we've kind of removed the green screen, We've introduced so much noise into the background and other areas as well compared to the original footage. That's why in this case, uh, I decided to use the the method where we just put the, uh, the the new footage on top and we don't have to key out the green screen. So we don't have these kind of uh, bad noise effects and other effects that we're going to have. So for now, I'm just going to delete the Delta key and go to the player tracker and then just put it back to foreground over background. So we're just going to have this... Uh, media uh, this footage back over on top of our green screen area here. Now we're just going to start fine tuning our compositing to make it look a bit better and more realistic. So first of all, uh, I'm just going to zoom in a bit, press control and just use the mouse scroll wheel. I'm just going to be a bit more accurate with these corner pins. So I'm just going to move it towards the corner. And to move the, mo uh, the monitor around, just press uh, the mouse scroll wheel down and we can just drag left and right. And for this bottom right, I'll just place it around about here. Obviously, if the if we have like a, a scene where it's just like a monitor with a, a thick bezel, I can just basically put this this right corner just on top entirely of the green screen. But as you can see in this particular scene, the green screen is kind of like going very near to the finger. So right now, I'm just going to leave a bit of green. Uh, maybe just uh, put the footage right here. So we're just going to leave a bit of green edge, which which we will fix later. And for the bottom left, again, I think it's kind of okay. Maybe I'll just move it around a bit. Maybe here. And for the top left, let's see. A top left is probably okay. So okay, we're just going to leave it as is for now. So to get rid of the uh, the green edges, we can just use the delta key again. I know that I've just said that I don't want to use any key, but since we're only getting rid of just the edges, we don't actually have to get like a great key. We can just remove the green. We don't actually have to make it completely transparent. So I'm just going to go back to the original image, press shift space again, and use the delta key again. And this time, I'm just going to press 1 to put the delta key on this first monitor. We're just going to select the background color again pick screen color, this green, press OK. Now, as I said before, since we don't really need to just remove the whole thing completely, we just want to kind of fix the edges. We can uh, reduce the gain a bit, so we don't have to be so aggressive. And the balance, we can also move it back down a bit. So as you can see, when we move the balance back down, it will affect the, uh, the other part of the image much, much less. So I'm just going to move the, the background down. And also the gain, maybe just move it a bit down as well. So but essentially, we don't actually make it completely transparent, but we're just getting rid of the, the, the green part. So now, as you can see, after the delta key, so this is the before, before you see like the green edges. So after we use the delta key uh, kind of sparingly, we kind of got rid of those uh, green edges around the edge of our, our footage. 
The next thing that we can do to make this look a bit better is just to fix the sharpness a bit. So right now, as you can see, the, the edges are like tacked sharp and the corner is like perfectly pointed, which is probably not what we wanted. So let's say uh, I'm just going to go to the fusion window, press shift space and search for rectangle. I'm just going to add a rectangle. Now, oh, I just disconnect that quickly. Uh, if I click um, the rectangle and press 1 to put it in the first monitor, so right now we just have like a white rectangle. I might want to increase its size a bit, so increase its width, and then increase its height, just so it fits perfectly within the, the monitor. And then for the uh, corner radius, I'm just going to increase a bit, so obviously now we can round out the edges. You probably don't want it that extreme or that much. Maybe just round out just a tiny bit so you can see the edges are a bit round. And also I might use the soft edges a bit so the edges are kind of slightly not as sharp. And then we're going to use this rectangle as the mask for our footage. So if I press 2 on our footage, so right now our footage is just like a perfectly pointed sharp square. So if I move the rectangle, uh, draw it into the media too, so you can see right now the edges are a bit less sharp and there's like a, a slight corner from the rectangle. So now we go back and look at our final results. You can see that now the corner is kind of less sharp and actually this might be a bit too much so I'm just going to go to rectangle and the soft edges might have to reduce it a bit. So that's zero. We just add a bit of soft edges and the quarter radius maybe I just reduce it just a little bit. Uh, something like that maybe just a bit more. There you go. So it's just a bit of a curvature right here. You might notice that on the edges of our footage, so if we go to the edges of the screen, there are some trans transparency here. That's because beforehand we used the delta keyer to key out the, some of the green. So obviously on the edges there are some like transparency, but it's okay since if you go to the edit tab and if there's nothing underneath this clip, it's just going to basically look straight through and always just going to see in the transparency area, just pure black. But obviously if we don't want it to be pure black, we can just go back to the fusion tab and we can introduce like a background, a background color to the whole footage. So when we see through the transparency, we will see a different color. So right now after the player tracker, I can press shift space and then search for background. There you go, background. I can just add a background. So right now, after the planar tracker, it's going to go into the merge and it's going to merge with the background. But right now, a slight problem is the background is going into the foreground. So basically the background is on top of our footage. So we're going to delete that and double click, double click to delete that. For the background, I'm going to right click and then drag into the merge one and set it as the background. And for this planar tracker here, I'm going to right click, drag into the merge and then use it as the foreground, so it's in front and the background is behind. So if we press 1, our background is just like a pure black. So now if we look at our footage, we can see like there's a pure black edge where the transparency used to be. So if, we, if I, oh, I can't turn off the background, otherwise you don't see anything. But basically if I change the color of the background here, so we see through its transparency and now we see red and we can see different color, green, blue. So let's say in a cheap like I, IPS screen, if you have a cheaper phone, it might be edge lit. So the corners will kind of, if you look, you know, I'm sure you've seen like the corner glow, the corner will be slightly brighter. So maybe we want like a slightly brighter color, maybe something like this. So it looks a bit more realistic. So right now we have a screen and then the corner is kind of like edge lit. So it will be like, you know, a white corner, something like that. Well, we probably don't want anything that kind of obvious. You might want it a bit more subtle, so it's not quite black, it's just slightly brighter, something like that. So now we have a cheap edge lit screen. The next thing we're going to do, so if I zoom out a bit, again press control and just use the mouse wheel, we can see that the footage that we're replacing uh, the green screen with is kind of a bit sharper than the rest of the, the images, so we might want to kind of uh, blur it a little bit. So basically right here, down here is our, our footage here. So after the footage, I'm just going to introduce maybe just a Gaussian blur. So I'm just going to press shift space, uh, blur, and use the Gaussian blur. Press add. So right now obviously the Gaussian blur is a bit quite like too much. So I'm just going to reduce it a bit. Maybe just uh, subtly. Just uh, pick a level that kind of matches your the sharpness of your footage, the, the background that you're using. So maybe like around here somewhere. So that's before, that's after. So that's before, that's after, that's looking pretty good, maybe just a bit less. 
So it's just a subtle, so that it's not too like overly sharp. So on top of the Gaussian blur, if you want to add anything even more, you can add like maybe a glow. So I press shift space and then just glow. Use this glow effect here. And on the image, let's say you're filming like a monitor on your, your camera. Sometimes it's kind of like a bit overly bright and kind of it loses a bit of saturation. So that's what we're the effect we're trying to replicate here. So we click on the glow node and then just use uh, glow alone. So we can see where we're uh, the glow effect we're introducing. I'm just going to reduce the shine threshold a bit. So the entire screen is pretty much glowing. And maybe the spread, I can increase it a little bit and then reduce the brightness a bit. So we just want the uh, the glow to glow just a little bit. And now we use the glow image. So basically it's the final image of the original image mixed with the glow. We have something like this, uh, maybe a bit too much. So I'm going to reduce the brightness further, maybe around here somewhere. So here's before, after, maybe that's too subtle. Uh, around there, before, after. So that's a slight a monitor glow coming from the image. Now the last thing we'll be adding to make things even more realistic is introduce some uh, motion blur. So obviously in real life if we are um, filming a screen that's moving around there's going to be some motion blur to it. So I'm going to click on the planar tracker and in the inspector tab go to the last option and now we're going to enable motion blur. Now if we zoom in a bit. Uh, obviously in this footage here the screen is not really moving very fast or a lot. So we can crank up the shutter angle. Normally it will be at around 180. So the higher the shutter angle, the more motion blur there will be. So in this case, I might as well just crank it up all the way. And if you want like high quality, you can increase the quality from 2 to like 6 or 7 or 32 or whatever you want. But obviously it will slow down your computer. Now we look at the before, uh, oh sorry, uh, before motion blur and after motion blur. You can see it's just a slight subtle addition of some motion blur in there. So obviously there will be some frame that will be more motion blur than others. So the frames where the uh, the footage is moving a lot, the screen is moving a lot, there will be more, more motion blur. And some, foot, some frame where the screen is kind of staying still, then there will be probably less motion blur. Okay, so that's pretty much one way of doing screen replacement in DaVinci Resolve using the Fusion tab. Now you might be saying, oh, looking at the node tree right here, it was so complicated, it took so long. But if you actually think about it, the, the main step is actually very, very simple. What we did at the beginning, all we did was we just put the uh, original image, so this original image here, into the planar tracker, and we just track the surface right here. And once we finish tracking, we just put our media in two, which is basically the footage that we're using to replace the green screen. And we just link it into the planar tracker using the corner pin, and basically, that's pretty much done. We've got our footage on top of the green screen tracked to follow it. And the rest of the node are basically all just to finesse the footage and make it look a bit better and more realistic basically. So if we actually just let's just have a quick recap of all the nodes. So all the nodes down here is basically just to deal with our, our footage that we're using to replace the green screen. So we have the rectangle that we use to make the edges kind of a bit more rounded and less sharp. Uh, so we use the rectangle into the footage to make it, uh, you know, instead of a completely square footage, it's kind of like a more a bit of roundness to the corner and kind of slightly less sharp. And then after that, we just use a blur to blur the footage a bit so that it looks kind of less sharp. And then we use a glow to make it close a bit, kind of like a monitor screen. And then after that, we just put it into the player tracker to replace our green screen that was there before. And for this side, the media in, if we look at look at it, so this is the original footage. Then we just use a delta key uh, subtly to just remove the green. We don't actually have to make it completely transparent. After we remove the green, we just put it into the player tracker to track the, the movement. And on top of that, just to put the, uh, the footage that we've used on top of the green screen so that it follows along. After that, we just use the merge here to merge in a black, black background. Well, not black, kind of, kind of, light gray. So on the edges where it's transparent, it instead of being completely pure black, it'll just be kind of like a slight edge glow because obviously we didn't, uh, when we used the corner pin, we didn't put the corner of the footage like all the way on top of the green screen. We left like kind of a slight small edge of green. So obviously this background will go in instead of where the green edges are. And then that's it. After that, we just output everything into the media out and we have our final results.
Okay guys, I guess that's pretty much it for today. If you have any other questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. I will uh, try my best to answer them if I happen to know the answer. And um, I hope today wasn't too long and confusing and convoluted. But as I said before, the main part is pretty much very easy and very short. The rest that took so long is just the finessing and uh, getting the footage to look a bit more realistic and a bit better. So anyway, that's probably, probably pretty much it for today. And Hopefully I'll see you around again maybe. <laughs> Bye.